South Africa's supermarket retailer ShopRite has announced it is considering a sale of all or a majority stake of its business in Africa's biggest economy, Nigeria, 15 years after it opened in the West African country. In a segment released on Monday, the company said it is re-evaluating its operating model and has been approached by many investors willing to take over its Nigerian stores. It added that it has decided to initiate a formal process to consider the sale of all or majority stake in its retail supermarkets in the country. The company with more than 2,900 outlets across Africa uh, also released its trading statement for 52 weeks to end June. In the trading statement, it announced that its South African division grew by 8.7%, while sales at its supermarkets outside uh, South Africa, excluding Nigeria, fell by 1.4%. Joining us live is Tess Arumesuli of FMCG Consults. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. What is your interpretation of the, this giant retail outlet considering exit um, from Nigeria? I mean, it's been a long way coming. Um, today it's ShopRite, tomorrow it might be another company. But it's been a long way coming if you've been following closely what has been happening within the retail space. Uh, 2019, the second half of it, ShopRite also um, reported about 8.1% loss in sale across the supermarkets in this country. So I guess it's been a long way coming, so to speak. And, and what does this say about the ease of doing business as, as it affects fast-moving consumer goods in Nigeria? And that's another ball game all by itself, because if you look at since... 2000, December 2005, when ShopRite opened their first store here um, in Lagos, up until now, where they have close to about 28 stores across eight states in this country, including the Federal Capital Territory. It then means that for a medium-sized or even the large-scale, fast-moving consumer goods company, once they launch a product, for them to be able to get visibility, ShopRite most often provides that for them because then ShopRite has the footfall, which is what they're looking for, which is the consumer eyeball. ShopRite has the spread, which is the number of outlets that they have caught across different states in this country, including the six commercially viable states that we have in this country for fast moving consumer goods. So in a large way, I, I think that if this exit goes through, this would impact not only the fast-moving consumer goods uh, business owners, but also experiential companies, especially marketing communication companies, where, you know, when there's uh, a need for product activation and stuff like that, if you have an agreement with ShopRite, then you're sure that you're, in already, that you're already in eight states and that you get a lot of consumer base. So it would have a negative and definitely positive outlook if you measure it in the long run. Okay, and I, I also want to ask um, your thoughts on a lot of people believe largest in economy in Africa, um, 200 million, you know, um, um, uh, plus, you know, with regards to our population. Um, wh how come that doesn't translate to higher uh, sales and better profit for these companies who, you know, flood ni the Nigerian market? Right. So although we have 200 million people in our population today, but if you look at the population grid, which is the triangle, and you divide that into three, you see that in the upper class, we have about 15 million people sitting there. In the middle class, we have about, what, 98 million people sitting there. And then in the bottom, bottom of the pyramid, that's the people who are like under one dollar, in fact, half 50 cents a day, we have about 108 million people sitting there. So a lot of people forget that of the 200 million people that we have in, in this country today, more than half of them or more than half of us are actually living below the dollar. What that means then is that the consumer spending power is actually limited. And so there are so many things fighting for the consumer share of pocket. So imagine this consumer within this bracket of the lower part of the economy or the lower part of the pyramid, which sits about 108 people. In this 
So from this same pocket, he has to feed. From this same pocket, he has to communicate in terms of buy recharge card and all of that. In this same pocket, he has to pay school fees. From this same pocket. So you'll find that certain items become a luxury when you're now dealing, if you're now looking at it from a population point of view. So yes, we have 200 plus million people sitting in this economy today or sitting in this country today. But in terms of disposable income and in terms of spending power, how much can the you know majority, which is like fifty percent plus, actually spend on this on on? Um, and would, and would you products? say? Would you say just a yes or no? Would you say that has become worse in the last few years? Oh, definitely yes, it has become worse. Okay. I'm not even mention the pandemic and the new economy, so to speak. Now it's even it's it's going down. It's it's a slide more. It's it's, it's, it's sliding. Like it's no diving. Right now. I, I want to also talk about, um, of course, from the expectations of a lot of people, people you know, are excited about local investors coming in uh, to take over that market. So what is the implication of the country's FDI on this development? And should this be seen as an advantage to local investors to jump in? OK, so in terms of foreign direct investments, um, this, of course, signals a red flag in many ways because um, a lot of companies see the success of some of these South African brands in Nigeria as a leveraging point or as a, as a hinge point for them to be able to come in. But on the back of that is the issue that they also see because they, these guys talk to each other at that level. And so the issues of um, currency devaluation, the issues of the irregularity in the supply chain, the issue of the lowering uh, consumer spend. When you put these three together, it doesn't really make our landscape, our economic landscape now, a very, very viable, um, should I say, opportunity or a viable outlook for anyone. But let's not also forget that ShopRite, particularly in their value proposition, one of the things they sold to the consumer is low prices on your everyday essential. And so for their business model, perhaps because they were going you know, they were going for the low pricing just to be able to stay competitive in the market. Perhaps now with local competition and local brands, supermarket retails coming up now, the competition is becoming too steep. And don't forget that in a market like Nigeria that we are in, that relationship sells a lot. So the local um, competitors may be able to have better relationship than they when I, when I say they, in quote now, people like ShopRite and the likes of them, who come in from, you know, like a foreign pair of eyes or from a foreign perspective. So yes, in a way, it is good for the local competition or for the local um, alternative. But then I also worry in the long run about management and, and stuff like that. Okay, well, we're looking forward to, you know, how this uh, uh, plays out. You know, of course, there would definitely be um, keeping our ears and our eyes open and, of course, hoping for an improvement in, you know, the you know, situation generally. Um, thank you, uh, Tess Uduma Rumasule. She is, uh, uh, the, of course, um, with the FMC and FMCG consultant. Thank you once again for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.